hours with a painting, especially a guy like Dali, who, for me, above all, is a technical wizard. He's not particularly a painter's painter, and it's not my favorite painter, although some of his stuff is really, really good, like most people know. But uh, I think he was more a, a, a technical wizard than anything else. And one thing he did do very well was market himself. He was very clever, he was no lunatic at all. He knew what he was doing. And in those days, remember the era, 1950s, New York, that went down like a bomb. They loved all his gimmicks and all his, you know, uh, crazy things that he'd do. My main concern now is just to fill up the areas with colour. Remember you can always then add to it. I'm using ye yellow ochre acrylic paints, a bit of violet, white, yellow ochre. Try and get those earthly colours in their places and then we can retouch at a later stage. Now going back to what I said about James Joyce before, there was also a guy called André Masson, or Masons, I think it's Masons who um, he came up with the idea of automatic drawing, which similarly to, to, to the, the James Joyce concept, it's just doodling, but they interpreted doodles as the mind drawing without the, the uh, consciousness stopping the flow. So let's say you just start drawing and you don't interfere. The conscious mind does not interfere with the uh, subconscious mind. So supposedly you start getting images that reflect a lot about you. I mean, at the end of the day, dreams supposedly say a lot about what's in your, in your psyche, what you, what's really bothering you and all that. Also an interesting point, surrealism affected not just uh, uh, painting and uh, literature, it also affected things like, like film. Luis Buñuel, eh, Buñuel the, the um, and Xiang Andalou, or, or an Andalusian dog. That film, you must, a lot of people must remember it watching. It's a black and white film when you see uh, a young girl and, and uh, you get a, a razor blade about to cut the, the pupil. It's a horrible scene. But that was surrealism, nonsensical, weird. Uh, ironically enough, it also affected photography. Uh, this, this photographer called Man Ray, he actually did some really interesting photographs that were not, you know, the, the, they were surrealist photographs. So, for instance, they had the body of a, of a naked woman seen from, from behind. And then he, he did the, um, I can't remember what they're called, you know, a violin, the actual cutout shape of the violin. That was surrealism, even in photography. And, um, uh, sorry, Man Ray. Now this bit is a bit more light there. I actually prefer it like that. Whiter, although it's behind, it's probably being hit by light. I mean, light in, in, in these type of painting, Magritte, where they're not, they don't conform to one point of, I mean, you can see shadows where there shouldn't be shadows. And I'm just gonna use my artistic uh, license and, and, and go even further with that. Just, I, I wanna create a mood. And I don't know, like I said in an earlier program, I don't know where I'm gonna go. I'm one, this is gonna take me. I'm just going to carry on and see what happens. guys, the Surrealists, were a, a funny bunch. They actually used to, they, they wrote a manifesto, like a, 
like a political party does, you know, where they, they said, that's where the problems probably originated and started, because each, each one of them eventually started going their own way. But they did have a, a, let's not bother too much about lines, but just cover the area. They did have some sort of guidelines as to what surrealism was and how they should go about it in the different uh, uh, arts and in, in, in all the different fields of art. And I always found that quite amusing, you know, to actually, I don't know, uh, limit painting to a manual, which is what it was. You can do this, you can do that. As you probably gather, or have gathered by now, I'm not a surrealist. I never have been, and I'm more of an expressionist. My eye is the eye of the heart. I've always, I've always thought the heart should rule the way. Not a very clever assumption, but that's the way I'm made. So I'm an expressionist, and my paintings are precisely that. cover a large surface area of shadow, which is what is going to create the mood. Now, funnily enough, another thing I've another thought I've had, surrealism in modern days really is what we see a lot of in, uh, uh, I don't know, magazines everywhere, using Photoshop. It's probably the best idea, the best way to, to, to show what surrealism or the effects. Basically, wizardry, technical wizardry, nowadays it would be done using the Photoshop, like you do retouching images. And all this time I'm spending doing this would probably take minutes in the hands of a good Photoshop editor. I'm just going to cover a large area now of, 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 uh, of a canvas. I'm using purple, which is really the, uh, the opposite color of, um, of yellow, just to create that mysterious shadow effect. Again, all this would have to be retouched carefully at a later stage. I cannot complete a large surrealist painting in a, in a half an hour session, but I want to try and get it as far as I can. There are no fixed rules in painting. I've always said that, and I've been watching this for a bit now, and I've noticed that uh, Chirico used to, the drawings are very architectural. He used to do the outlines in black. So I've, again, I've improvised, and I've got a black magic 